Hey folks, on this channel I've made a lot of audio app development tutorials, many using AudioKit. My aim has been to create fun videos on a topic that's often seen as difficult. However, in trying to make these videos quick and to the point, I feel like I've sometimes glossed over the details of how audio apps are made, the high-level process of writing an app, and general advice for becoming an indie app developer. Well, today we're making a BeatPad AUV3 app, and I'll explain the process along the way. By the end of this video, we'll have a starter app template for you to get your own sounds into an app. While this video is mainly for those new to app development, I hope it has a little something for everyone. And by the way, we just crossed 15,000 subscribers, so thank you all so much for joining in the journey. Let's get started. First, let me see if I can talk you out of making your own app. For most people, the financial returns are relatively small for the number of hours that you have to put in for building an app. Whereas Super Mario Brothers is still running on the same code that it was written in in the 80s, mobile apps need to be updated at least every one to two years. And if your goal is just to make your sounds available to others, you could consider creating sound packs for apps like Decent Sampler or Koala Sampler instead of going up the learning curve of app development. And if none of that scares you off, then let's continue. To make iOS and macOS apps, you'll need Xcode and an Apple developer account. Xcode is free from the macOS App Store with a new major version released each year alongside iOS and macOS updates. Inside Xcode you can download device simulators for testing your application, but to install to a physical device you need an Apple developer account. A free account allows test builds to be installed on your device for two weeks but cannot be submitted to the App Store. For publishing you'll need a paid account which is $99 a year. I won't go over the details of creating these accounts as Apple's developer site will have the most up-to-date information on getting everything set up. Once you have your developer account, your first challenge is getting an application installed to your device through Xcode. When you create a new project, it provides a simple Hello World template. You'll need a developer certificate for building your application and a distribution certificate for uploading it to the App Store. Depending on your app's functionality, you might need to create a provisioning profile or let Xcode create one for you. This process has gotten better over the years, but it's still confusing and it's always changing. So I recommend referring to Apple's resources if you get stuck. And I wish you good luck. Once you've installed the Hello World app, congratulations. You did the first big thing. Now we can get started making our BeatPad app and I'll talk you through the process as we build it. And of course, links to everything will be in the description. Before we get started, let's choose an audio framework for our app. For iOS audio apps, most developers use frameworks like AudioKit or Juice, or they build natively with custom C++ DSP or Apple's AV Foundation. For cross-platform apps, I recommend Juice. I haven't used Juice a whole lot, but I know the audio programmer has a lot of great tutorials for it, and I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. Since we're just focused on iOS, I prefer using AudioKit with native components. For our instruments, AudioKit's Apple Sampler and Dunn Sampler are great options with examples for both in the AudioKit cookbook. I prefer using Apple Sampler since it's built on top of Apple's AV Audio Unit Sampler and can be ported natively if need be in the future. Here's a quick breakdown of these different options. To get started learning AudioKit, download the AudioKit Cookbook Xcode project from GitHub and go through the recipes to see what's possible and how it's implemented in Swift. Now back to our project, first we'll create a new Swift UI application called BeatPads. Swift and Objective-C are the native languages for Apple apps and Swift UI is a declarative user interface framework that allows us to add elements like text, buttons, sliders, etc. with just a few lines of code. Next we'll choose a location for our app and if this is a project that we plan on sticking with, I recommend creating a private GitHub repository. Using source control allows us to share code easily, revert to earlier versions, and access your code from anywhere. Plus it gives you these cool green squares anytime you make a commit. I love starting with a clean Hello World application where the possibilities are endless and the code base is still clean. Now let's trash it. If I'm making a project similar to something I've done before, I steal that code from myself. Doing this saves time and builds on the work that you've done previously. Adding third-party libraries like AudioKit are also huge time savers and it's easier than ever now with Swift Package Manager. Go to File, Add Package Dependency, paste in the GitHub URL for AudioKit and add it to your project. For our BeatPad, we'll create a four x four grid of buttons. Using AI like ChatGPT can fill in your programming knowledge gaps and the results are continuing to improve. 
Okay, so AI is pretty overhyped at this point, I will admit, but coding is one place where the benefits are undeniable. Here you can see with a single prompt combined with app development domain knowledge, you're able to create something pretty good really quickly. We could use this code, but I know from previous experience that we need better touch handling than SwiftUI Gestures offers for our pads. I've made a simple 4x4 beat pad in one of my previous 100 lines of code audio kit examples, and I'll steal that code as a starting point for our app. Instead of these custom buttons, we'll use the guitar layout from Audio Kit's keyboard package and also add the controls package for ribbon sliders to adjust parameters like attack, release, reverb amount, and master volume. All right, so this next part is just a big time lapse of putting the app together. Whenever I start making an app, I have a general idea of what all I want the functionality to be, but I'm not really sure what the layout is going to be yet, so that's what I'm sort of working through. So enjoy the tunes while we fast forward through the next few hours of work.
There are various ways to source the sounds for your apps. You can record them yourself or you can find some public domain or at least open source sounds when the license will allow you to reuse them. You could also partner with the sound designer and maybe they provide the sounds while you write the code. For this template, we're using the FreePath Synthesizer Percussion Pack. We'll import the sounds, format them for our pads layout, and use an AU preset file for sample management. When you build this project, you can replace these sound files or create new instruments by duplicating the AU preset and changing the file paths to new sounds in your Xcode project. AU preset files are originally made inside of GarageBand using the AU sampler. I'll link to a video that goes a little more in detail about that. You won't really need to mess with it with this example, but it's a good thing to learn in case you want to make some more instruments in the future. For MIDI support, we'll use the MIDI kit framework and we'll enable background capabilities for continuous playback when the screen goes dark. MIDI kit will be replacing the built-in MIDI support for audio kit starting in audio kit 6, but it already works with audio kit 5. You just need to import the MIDI kit package and I'll steal the implementation from my polyphonic synth example and the audio kit experiments GitHub repo. Between reading documentation, exploring the cookbook, using AI, searching GitHub, Stack Overflow, and Google, and just asking other developers, you'll find answers to most of your coding problems. And the more coding problems you solve, the faster you'll become at solving them. One of the major problems I faced was getting AUV3 support to work the first time. There was an AUV3 example from Audio Kit 4 that helped a lot, but it had become deprecated. This led me to make my own AUV3 instrument example using Audio Kit 5, and now we'll steal that code as a starting point for our audio unit extension. To do this, we'll add a new audio unit extension target in Xcode and begin migrating code from the Swift UI branch of our existing AUV3 example. While this is rolling, I'll talk a little bit about how to market your apps. App Store Optimization, or ASO, is a crucial component of app discoverability. Improving your app's icon, screenshots, and metadata can increase visibility on the App Store. Also, it can be helpful to share your development journey on social media, contact creators in the mobile music space for promotion, and submit your app to Apple in advance for potential feature on the App Store. ASO is an evolving process for your application, so try different things, maybe change out the icon or screenshots every once in a while. Unfortunately, to do those things, it requires updating your app entirely and having it go through review. It's not like a YouTube video where you can just change the thumbnail quickly, but if you're not seeing the numbers that you'd like to see, that's one thing that you have control over that you can try tweaking. Finally, after wiring everything up, here's our BeatPad app running as an AUV3 inside of Logic Pro. Now we have a solid template for creating a BeatPad style app with AUV3 support using AudioKit. Download the project, start adding your own sounds, and steal the code as a starting point for building your own Frankenstein beat making app. And that's it. Originally this video was going to be much longer, but I cut it down considerably since I have a tendency to ramble and not use periods at the end of sentences and why is he still talking and so here are some other random tidbits that got cut in the interest of time. I hope you found this video and this project helpful. Come say hi in the comments, the algorithm likes that and I do too. Let me know if you have any questions and good luck. Thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you all next time.